Hello, everyone. The last time you were gathered to learn about insects, you were joined by a fly, an insect with whom you are surely familiar. I am also a very common insect that loves to live in bathtubs or underneath kitchen sinks. My cousins and I often hide during the day, so you may not notice us. Does anyone know what kind of insect I am? I am a cockroach. Do you think I look anything like a fly? There are millions of insects on Earth. At first glance, we may look very different from one another. What are some of these differences? What are some ways that we are the same? Some insects, like butterflies and grasshoppers, have wings, whereas others, like fleas and microscopic lice, don't. Microscopic means very, very small, something that can only be seen with a microscope. Some eat plants and others eat animals, but all insects have certain features in common. I am here to talk about what makes an insect an insect. Our name should give you a clue. Let's listen to these words: insect, section. What part of these words sounds similar? Sect. Meaning part, an insect's body is built in sections or parts, three parts to be exact. We'll use one of my friends, the ant, as an example. All insects have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. The head is the center of an insect's senses, but different kinds of insects can have very different-looking heads. The thorax is the middle part of the insect's body. The abdomen is at the end of the insect's body, farthest away from the head. What do you notice about the heads of these common insects? Do they look anything like yours? Do they have eyes? Yes, they do, but they are different from your eyes. For one thing, many insects have more than two eyes. Most insects, like this cricket, have big eyes located on the sides of the head. Many insects also have smaller, simple eyes on the tops of their heads. Look closely at this cricket's head. Can you see its eyes? Although some insects see better than others, most insects also use their other senses to get information about their environment. Look at this bush cricket. Does it have a mouth? Yes, its mouth is a small hole at the front of its head, surrounded by mouth parts. You and the cricket both use your mouths to taste and eat. Look at the variety of insect mouth parts. Some look like sponges; others look like scissors or needles. An insect's mouth is carefully designed for eating certain types of food. Some insects bite and chew solid foods. Others suck liquids. Still others pierce their foods. For example, cockroaches like me eat just about anything we can find. We have two pairs of jaws for biting, cutting, and chewing food well. Other insects, like the tiny aphids that destroy farmers' crops, have mouth parts that look more like drinking straws. They feed by sucking sap from plant leaves and stems through these tubes. Look how long and sharp this mosquito's mouth part is, perfect for piercing the skin of its prey and sucking its blood. Have you ever been bitten by a mosquito? They love to feed on people as well as other animals like horses and birds. Butterflies and bees have long mouth parts for sucking nectar from flowers. Look closely. Can you imagine this butterfly's mouth parts? Working like a straw to suck nectar from a flower. So now you've seen insect eyes and mouths. What else do you see on the head of these insects? Ah, yes, those long feelers. Those are the insect's antennae, their most important sense organs. Insect antennae come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and help insects learn more about their surroundings. These jointed feelers, such as those on this cricket, are often covered with tiny bristles and pegs, and some are even quite feathery. Antennae are primarily used for smell and touch. 
although some can pick up sounds or detect movements in the air. Do you see a nose on this cricket? No, at least nothing that looks like your nose. Instead of a nose, the cricket uses its antennae to smell. Eyes, mouth, antennae. What else might you expect to find on an insect's head? What other sensory organs do you have on the side of your head? Right, ears. Do you see any ears on this cricket? No. The cricket's ears are located on its legs, attached to the middle section of the cricket's body. The middle section of an insect's body is called the thorax. The thorax has three pairs of jointed legs and usually, but not always, two pairs of wings. Notice I said pairs. A pair is two of a specific item. If there are three pairs of legs, how many legs does an insect have altogether? Yes, all insects have six legs. Let's take a look at the cricket's thorax and see if we can spot its ears. Look just below the knee joint on the front leg. Do you see a smooth patch of skin? That is the cricket's eardrum, which is very important for it communicating for, with other insects through sound. The cricket's eardrum bends in and out to catch sound waves so it can communicate with other crickets. Insect legs vary according to an insect's lifestyle. How do you think the long, muscular back legs of a grasshopper might help it? That's right. Its legs are designed for jumping to quickly escape danger. Have you ever seen the fuzzy legs of a honeybee covered with yellow clumps of pollen that it carries back to its hive? And how do you think the back swimmer beetle's pair of long legs help it in its water habitat? Notice the oar-like shape of the eggs that it uses for paddling. Caterpillars have three pairs of true legs on the front part of their bodies, but their long bodies need extra support, so they also have several pairs of stubby legs and back to help them cling to stems and leaves. These false legs are called prolegs. Caterpillars loop along, grasping stems with their front legs, or true legs, before drawing their bodies up into a loop to hold on with their hind legs, or pro legs. So do caterpillars have six true legs like all other insects? Yes, they do, but they also have pro legs. Only adult insects have wings, and some insects don't have any wings at all. If an insect does have wings, they are located on the insect's middle section or thorax. Wings allow insects to move quickly from place to place, and they are surely one reason insects have survived in such large numbers for so many years. Insect wings may look very different from one another, but a network of veins supports each wing. Veins carry needed materials to different parts of the body. When it's quiet at night, especially in the summertime, you may hear an interesting chirping noise coming from insects outside. That sound may be a cricket. Cricket's wings have veins. The veins of a male cricket's wings are thicker and shaped differently from many other insects. You'll learn more another day about how a cricket uses its wings to make its unique chirping sounds. So far, we've looked at an insect's head and its thorax. Every insect body is made up of three sections. What is the name of the third section? The third and largest section is called the abdomen. Do you have an abdomen? Yes, you do. Your abdomen is your belly. Like an insect, your abdomen is where you digest your food or break it down so your body can use it to grow and stay healthy. An insect's abdomen is also the part of its body where the female produces eggs. The abdomen is also where insects breathe. Like you, insects need oxygen from the air to live, but they do not have lungs and they do not take in air through their noses or mouths. Instead, if you look closely at this cricket's abdomen, you will see a line of tiny holes along its side. That is where insects take in air containing oxygen to breathe. 
So what makes an insect an insect? Well, it has three body parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. It also has six legs, and most insects have wings. But that's not all. All insects are invertebrates, meaning that they have no backbones. Instead of having skeletons inside their bodies like you, insects wear their skeletons on the outside. These waterproof exoskeletons, made of a tough, flexible material called chitin, protect the insect's soft insides like a suit of armor. Just like your backbone and bones, an insect's exoskeleton is the thing to which the insect's muscles attach. Here is another one of my cousins. We cockroaches were around long before the dinosaurs. I think our thick exoskeletons may have had something to do with our long survival, don't you? Next time, the narrator of the read aloud will be an insect that holds its front legs together in a prayer position. What do you think that might be? She'll tell you how insects grow from tiny eggs into adults. Be prepared to be amazed.